So kids, last week, if you remember the lesson, we actually introduced to you already uh, Elijah, right? Elijah was a righteous man. Mm -hmm. Remember him? Yep. Now, we're going to continue actually with Elijah, right? Now, what happened to Elijah? The Lord, uh, Elijah, as we said, is a prophet, right? And as a prophet, he would have to go and uh, warn people. And this time, actually, he was speaking to the king of Israel, mm -hmm. Ahab. To Ahab. Yeah. And he said in verse 1, uh, Surely as the Lord, the God of Israel, lives before whom I stand, there shall be neither Jew nor reign these years except by my word. Okay. And as we can see, what happened in verse 7. Uh-huh. And if you remembered last week, we learned that Elijah prayed that there won't be any rain. Remember, mm -hmm. kids? We learned that our prayer has to be in sync or aligned with that of God. Right? So this, today, we actually continue on with the journey of Elijah. Right? And Elijah was given, the Lord spoke to Elijah. And what did the Lord tell Elijah to do? We have to go to verse 7 first, teacher angel. Okay. Okay, so in verse 7, what happened? So remember, Elijah prayed that it would not rain. Yes. And it did not rain. So verse 7 says, And after a while, the brook dried up. Uh-huh. Because there was no rain in the land. So there's a picture there of a dried up brook. And there's Elijah in the dried up brook. So there was no water. So imagine that. Imagine that. Now look at our uh, weather right now. Besides the uh, enhanced lockdown, we also are experiencing summer. And I'm sure we have to really pray hard that, you know, our waters in the water dams will not dry up. Mm -hmm. So that we will not run out of water, right? Yeah. Because especially now that we are facing the... Uh, COVID situation, COVID-19 situation, and we really have to be taking care of our personal hygiene and all those things. And so water is very important. Right. But at that time, it dried up, you know, see, so it's there was no rain because imagine there wasn't, there hasn't been rain for so long, mm -hmm. right? But what do we learn from verse 8? The word of the Lord came to Elijah and told him to go to a certain place. And kids, I want you to look at verse 8 and 9. This was, these were the specific instructions of the Lord to us, right? So when the Lord instructs us, it's always specific. Right, Teacher Daniel? Have you noticed that? No? Mm -hmm. That it's specific when He tells us to do something. It's never vague, it's never general, mm -hmm. it's always specific. Have anything to add there? Yeah, I just wanted to add earlier that in verse 7, Elijah was in a very difficult situation. I mean, imagine not having rain for so long. Yes. You know, these are situations that, get, that can rob us of our hope. They can make us feel at the point of despair, right? We can worry and fear. And this is the reality in our world today. There are many things that can prevent us from having hope there That's are many right. things that can frighten us and scare us right just like covid That's covid 19 right. many people are dying and the cases keep going up each day and we also heard that the lockdown could be extended up to it is extended up, up to april, april 30, 30 and it could it could go beyond right and in verse 8 we see that god's word came to elijah at mm -hmm. the right time at the right time. so you see god always gives us hope he gives us a source of hope and that yes. is his word so even when we feel that everything around us is changing and not going well, we know that we have a God who cares about us and who will supply us with the word at the right time. That's right. That's right, teacher Ariel. So it's really exciting when the word of the Lord came to Elijah and told Elijah to give him specific instructions that even before that, kids, God took care of Elijah. He fed Elijah you know, at night and even in the morning. Personally, he took care of Elijah. So when Elijah came to Zarephath, no, he told Elijah, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. Dwell means live there. Okay? Mm -hmm. So he was telling uh, Elijah, go to this place. I want you to live there. And the Lord did not just leave 
Elijah hanging there, like, go there, and without knowing what to do, right? Mm -hmm. But he told Elijah, right. I have commanded a widow. a widow to feed you. So what is a widow? Okay, so a widow, teacher Rachel, is a lady who had lost her husband okay. either in death or in sickness okay okay so she uh she no longer has a husband so that's why she's called a widow okay okay so yeah. kids you know that what a widow means right so she is a uh, and she's a mom it could be a single mom who lost her husband in mm -hmm. debt so that's why she's known as a widow so the lord said go there for i've commanded a widow to feed you look at the word to feed you so you see how personal besides being uh, specific in his instructions God also is very personal he knows how to take care of our needs and you know it's very timely kids because today is resurrection Sunday and also the title of our lesson is when there is what's the title of our lesson Hope at the edge of your rope. Okay, so when there is nothing, we can always turn to God because right. He's our hope, our source of hope. Right, kids? So just like what God did here, He gave Elijah direction. So when you're feeling hopeless, God can give you direction and He will also provide for you. The same way He said that I will command, I've commanded a widow to, to feed you. So God gives you direction uh -huh. and God provides for you. That's very good. No? That's the thing. Now, so when what happened now in verse 10 when he so uh kids what did elijah do did he obey did he listen yes he did right so he went to zarephath and exactly is how the lord said would happen it happened there at the city gate he met the widow and what was the widow doing kids in verse 10 what does it say the widow was outside as you can see in the picture now she was gathering sticks. And what do we do with sticks? I'm sure many of you have been to camps or you did camping outside. And we usually get sticks to create a bonfire, mm -hmm. right? But for the widow, <coughs> she was gathering sticks because she was going to light, use that as a fire to be able to cook her meals, mm -hmm. right? To cook her food yeah. for her and her son. So that's what they would use in, in those days. Unlike for us today when we need to cook, we have an electric stove or we have a gas range, right? But for her, she was gathering sticks. Okay, and then what happened? So Elijah called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel that I may drink. Now this is interesting because how did Elijah know that this was the widow that God was telling her about? Uh -huh, right? uh -huh. So what can we learn from that? We we can see that when you're in sync with God, because Elijah was in sync with God, God can speak to you. God uh -huh. can give you discernment. Okay, this is the person I told you about, Elijah. This is the widow. So Elijah believed and he knew that this was the person he needed to meet. Uh -huh. But what interests me more is he told her to bring him a little water in a vessel that I may drink. Yes, I was also caught by that. And it reminded me, or it kind of made me see that Elijah, in the first place, was a man of God. He was a righteous man. He loved God. And at the same time, he did not want to take advantage of the widow, right? Usually when we go to other people's places, right, kids? You would when when your host would ask you what would you want to have and you would say oh could I have a, a cup of a glass of milk or a glass of coke soft drinks right uh, we we actually but with Elijah all he asked was a little water yeah not even drink. not even a full glass just a little a little water right and as she was going to bring it. What did he tell her besides the water? He asked her to bring him a morsel of bread. Okay. Now, morsel is a big word, but what does morsel mean, teacher? Angel? Okay, morsel means a little piece okay, so of bread. Okay, how, so how small is a little If piece? you were able to watch uh, Gollum and uh, 
in the Lord of the Rings. Lord I'm of not the sure Rings. if they watched that yet. Yeah, but I'm sure our older or kids. Think of a pandesal, older a kids were pandesal. able to watch yeah. like this tiny bit. Mm -hmm. Or if you try to imagine the little piece of of bread, right? Uh, I mean, a or the pandesal. communion wafer. I think it's even little than that. Okay. It's even tinier than that. Okay. So just a morsel. That's all he asked. Because he knew that the widow also needed it for herself, yeah. right? So he didn't want, again, kids, he was a righteous man. He was a man of God and he loved God. And he he also had pity. He also had pity on the on the poor widow. And he didn't want to take advantage of her. And that's that's so nice of Elijah, right? Right. Okay, so that caught you too, huh? Just like when I was studying it too, Teacher Ray. Right, and now in verse 12, kids, it says, and she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of flour in a jar, and a little oil in a jug. Now, I'm sure that the widow was very concerned of Elijah because, for one, there was no water, right? And if you're in a community, especially now in COVID, right? Yeah. We really want to help other people. I'm sure this widow wanted to help Elijah. But what was her situation? Her situation was she had nothing baked. No bread, uh -huh. nothing, only a handful of flour. Now, a handful is very little. It could yes, be, just like this, handful right? of flour. And she said she's preparing herself because very soon she and her son will have nothing else to eat. The last part of the uh -huh. verse says, I'm going to gather a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. Okay. Now, if we were to think about what's happening with COVID-19, many of our kababayans uh -huh. don't even have enough food, yes. right? And they're <clears throat> so worried about where they're going to get the next um, meal for them, right? We, we have watched the news, we have heard about it, and it really breaks our hearts. And mm -hmm. as we told you about this also last Sunday, I'm sure many of you started praying for them, and that's yeah. a good thing to do. And also, if you have extra... It would be nice if you will be able to share with those who don't have, right? You could give to the needy. So uh, the Lord will bless you for that. No? And uh, even when you're about to eat, this is how I pray actually when I'm about to eat. I say, Lord, bless also those who have nothing to eat. Right. That they too will be able to eat just like us. Because for us, we are able to eat three times a day. So going back to the widow, Teacher Reno, mm -hmm. it was going to be her last meal. Yeah. Now you watch Jace and Jacob a while ago and how they made the fluffy pancakes, right? And actually the ingredients that the widow had was just a handful of flour mm -hmm. and a little oil. So she was going to make bread for sure. Yes, store. bread. And that was going to be the last meal. Yeah. And remember kids, we don't know how long the famine was. If we look back, uh, I'm sure it's going to be very, very long, right? For us, it's uh, we haven't even reached our 30 days yet, right? Or even 40 days. It's just like two or three weeks only. And the uh, scarcity of food is already there. And uh, people are so worried, you know, anxious. There's no work, no pay, and stuff like that. And uh, God is still gracious, right? If you would look at how he has been taking care of you and your family yeah. and also uh, your other friends and their families, right? So I'm sure the Lord was up to something. And uh, if he was concerned about Elijah, we want you to see now we're going to study that. We'll go to the next part, right? In verse 13, teacher read Yeah, you. so what did Elijah have to say? He said to her, do not fear. Now, if you've been following us since episode 1, uh -huh. our title then was Faith in a Time of Fear, yes. right? And Jesus told his disciples to not be afraid. And now we're here in an Old Testament story, and Elijah is telling the woman, don't be afraid. Don't lose hope. Don't worry about the things that are happening. Don't give up. Because he said, but first make me a little cake of it, do uh -huh. as you have said, and bring it to me, and afterward make something for yourself. And your son. So, why? Elijah seems so hopeful. Why is he so certain? Because of verse 14. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of flour shall not be spent, and the jug of oil shall not be emptied until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. 
Wow. So see, Elijah was so certain about uh -huh. who his God was. He knew that God would keep to his promise. Remember what we learned? To mm. take God at his word. Mm. This is what Elijah was doing. He trusts in the Lord. He knew that That's right. God, this is a situation, a hopeless situation we're in. But I know that you're going to take care of me. You're also going to take care of this widow. And that widow needed to hear that. That widow needed to know that, you know what? The Lord loves you. The Lord will provide for you. Even if the situation is so hopeless for you. So we have to trust in the promises of the Lord. Okay. Even when we don't have hope. That's right, Teacher Ingel. I really like what you said. I just want to add to that. If we go back to verse 13, it says there, do not fear. That's a very comforting word that we always get to, right? It's just like your dad and mom telling you, don't worry enough, it's going to be okay, right? Or it's just like saying, do not fear. That's what Elijah was comforting or giving that assurance to the widow by telling her, do not fear. Go and do as you have said. But first, make me a little cake of it and bring it to me. And afterward, make something for yourself and your son. And he continued. Because kids, try to recall what we told you last Sunday. A prophet is a man of God that goes about teaching people about God, right? Warning them about God. And even telling them, you know, you have to repent, go back to God. And now, he was carrying the message of God. He carries, a prophet carries the message of God to the people. And he was telling the widow, for thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of flour shall not be spent. You know what it means not be spent? Meaning the jar of flour that you have will never run empty. It will never be empty. So if there will be famine for three years, the jar of flour is going to last for three years. And if the jug of oil, even the jug of oil that she has, the little oil that she has, it's not going to be empty. Mm -hmm. And it will stay that way till the Lord brings rain or sends rain upon the earth again. Wow, that's so beautiful, right, Teacher Radio? Yes. Because even for us, we have seen the hand of God and how He provides. Mm -hmm. We have never been hungry. Yeah. He always takes care of our needs, just as He always protects us. And I'm sure kids... That's why we're excited about you also and what you can share, your stories, your reflections with your dad and mom, with your parents. Probably they have stories to share of how God provides. In the midst of this COVID-19 situation, we do not know how long it's going to be, right? If it's going to be uh, 30 days, a month, or even more than a month, it might even reach 40 days. But what is comforting to know that at the edge, when there is nothing, when we have no more hope, God is still our hope. Right. Yeah. So as we see in verse 15, so she went and did as Elijah said. So she obeyed, and she and her he and she and he and her household ate for many days. So what can we learn from verse 15? So she followed, right? And we see that God. We'll take care of you. That's what Teacher Angel said. All we need to do is just obey and yes. to trust Him. So as Teacher Angel said in verse 16, Now the jar of flour was not spent, so it did not run out. Neither did the jug of oil become empty. So wow, imagine that. Imagine your, your food supplies not running out. And, and this happened according to the word of the Lord. Now you see, the word of the Lord keeps popping up in this passage. So what do we learn here, Teacher Angel? We learn that God's word will always happen. What uh -huh. God promises to do, He will do. What, he will keep what to is, it. Yeah, what did we learn in episode 1? We have to take God, God at, his, at word. his word. So yes. when God promises something, in this case, Elijah promised her that the Lord will take care of her. And what did the Lord do? He provided for her. Yes. Right? Not just for Elijah, but also so for, the, for widow the widow and, and her, her son. Her son yeah. And her household, right? So, God is ever faithful. And you know, Teacher Rainio, what I've noticed with the character of the widow and the character of Elijah, 
when Elijah heard what God wanted him to do, he willingly obeyed. He didn't ask questions like, Lord, you want me to go to Zarephath? What do you want me to do there, Lord? How am I going to live and stuff like that? He never complained. Right. He never questioned God. He just said, okay, Lord, I'll go. And even in the same way, the widow, she listened to Elijah. Yeah, she didn't even know who he was. She didn't know who he was. He was a total stranger. Mm -hmm. But she, because she listened to Elijah, she had a listening heart, yeah. teachable heart. And she got blessed. Right. And I'm sure when Elijah stayed with her, as we all will see uh, later on, Elijah was a living witness to the widow. Right. And he brought hope. He brought the word of God. He brought mm -hmm. God to her because she didn't know God. She right. didn't know who God was. Right. Right. So God has a purpose for his actions, for his plans. So we always have to trust what God's plans are. We have right. to take him at his word right. because he knows what's best for us. Right. right. So even if this COVID-19 situation will end or go on, the Lord will take care of us. Right. Right, so there is always that hope, mm -hmm. that burning hope in us. Right. So I think our Bible point for today, Teacher Radio, is when there is nothing else left, God is still our hope. Right. So right. once again, our Bible point is when there is nothing else left, God is our hope. Yes, now, I right. just want to relate this shortly to Easter Sunday because today is Easter Sunday. Yeah. Um, when Jesus Christ died, remember Jesus had a lot of disciples uh -huh. with him. And when he died, the disciples not only lost their teacher, a leader, but they also lost a friend. And it was so hard to start over because, okay, here there's persecution and everything. But you know what? Jesus spoke to them not to fear. He was telling them all this time. He, well, when he was alive, he was telling them, "Do not fear. This will happen. I will be, I will be crucified, but I will rise up after three days." And the disciples forgot that, and they could, you know, the disciples could have just given up and quit being followers of Christ, but they still continued to live uh -huh. day by day. Yes, they went through difficult situations, just like the widow, but you know what? The disciples trusted in God that they would even before they saw him again and now that christ has risen and they saw that christ rose wow this really is jesus jesus that's is right. really god and that's our hope guys yes in this life we're always going to have trouble we're always going to have problems but remember this if jesus is alive he is our hope mm -hmm. because he knows our situations he cares for us and he will provide remember that's what he did for the widow mm -hmm. god provided for the widow he provided for elijah and even for the son because he cares for us he loves us so once again going back to the bible point when you don't when you feel like you don't have anything god is your hope so just take god at his word and he will accomplish whatever he promises he will do that's right that's beautifully said teacher thank you so much